inviting me here. I'm really, truly honoured. I think uh, if you if you want to see what I am saying in German, uh, a translation has been distributed. So they are in the, in the place. Yeah. Okay. George Orwell is once supposed to have said that in a time of deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. We now live in a time of deceit. The deceit that we are talking about here today is the deceit of gender self-ID. It's the lie that what makes people men or women, boys or girls, males or females, is what they claim about themselves based on their ideas and their feelings and not the reality of their immutable sexed bodies. Think about what it would mean for that to be true. It would mean that we human beings are somehow fundamentally different from not just all other primates, not just from other mammals, but from all other living things. This is a new secular version of creationism. It's a claim that our species is not just part of nature, but is set above it, is able to rewrite biological reality and the rules of life by sheer force of will rather than being subject to them like all other species. But being this specific type of animal isn't something meaningless. We are human beings with everything good and bad, every strength and limitation that that implies, everything that is specific to our species and everything that is shared with other forms of life. Like other animals, we are conceived, we are born, we grow up, we conceive and nourish new lives in a process that is fundamentally and irreducibly different for males and females. And then we grow old and we die. But we are different from other animals too. Not just set apart from them, but different. We are physically weak and we live complex imaginary lives. We are often confused by the feeling that we are ghosts in a machine, which is the phrase that a British philosopher used to describe René Descartes' mind-body dualism. And my compatriot, the Irish poet W.B. Yeats, once called us souls fastened to a dying animal. In this disembodied modern world with machines to do our work and to allow us to communicate, we represent ourselves as CGI, as computer game avatars and social media profiles. We are leaning into a dangerously attractive idea, which is that we are something separate from our bodies rather than being our bodies. This is causing all sorts of harm to our physical health, to our mental health, as we ruminate about our identities rather than seek connections with others and imagine that a good life is to be found in self-definition rather than in doing good work and helping other people. And we see these harms mostly in our children, in the mental health crisis that is sweeping through schools as children are taught to teach, see themselves as fragile and to reframe every challenge as a trauma Children are learning that if people do not agree with their own self-image, that is hate. To te they, we're teaching children that puberty is avoidable rather than being one of life's two great developmental sprints. This self-ID law is motivated by all these toxic, pernicious, dangerous ideas. And like all ideas that run counter to material reality, it hurts the least privileged most. It hurts women. If men can declare themselves to be women, then women cannot draw boundaries that exclude men. When women cannot say no to men, we do not have rights. A woman who has been raped cannot insist that only another woman can carry out the forensic exam on the body that has already been violated by a man. She cannot turn to the support of women-only spaces to recover and heal. She cannot form women-only organisations where she can talk about experiences that only women can go through. She cannot tell men who intrude on spaces that are for women to get out. Of course it's not all men who commit violence and sexual crimes, but it's mostly men. We can't tell which ones are safe, but we can be pretty sure that the boundary violators, the ones who insist that their special identities give them the right to overstep our boundaries and ignore our no, are more likely than the average man to cause us harm, not less. Good men stay out so the bad men stand out. 
If the men who claim to be women really understood what it is to be a woman, they would not impose themselves on us like this. The destructive idea of gender self-ID hurts children too. They believe what adults tell them. Ideas have consequences. If we tell them that their bodies are unimportant, that they are disembodied creatures, that their bodies are nothing more than a meat suit to be customised, that they can opt out of growing up, that people must pretend to see them as the sex that they are not, and that if other people refuse to engage in that pretense they are hateful and want the children dead, then we are teaching children to be mentally unwell. We are creating bodily distress and discomfort in children. We are putting untold numbers in the camp to gender distress and some of them will go on to make irreversible decisions that harm their health yeah, for their whole lives. Some will take puberty blockers. They will damage their brain development, their bone strength, and stunt their genitals. We know that these powerful, untested medications block the process whereby children come to understand their adult sexuality. They lock in gender distress, and many of those children will proceed to cross-sex hormones, which cause permanent physical changes beards and deep voices for girls and breasts for boys and then they go on to have cross-sex surgeries in adulthood some of the boys had been lured into this by addictive and violent porn that is so readily accessible on their mobile phones and some of the girls know what their male classmates are looking at and they reject the portrayal of female sexuality as objectification and degradation the porn aesthetic is now mainstream and even young teenage girls feel they have to be Instagram ready at all times and they opt out of girlhood and opt out by identifying as boys or non-binary. This is the most depressing development of my lifetime. I remember when girls were told that we were fully human and that within the constraints of physical strength and the facts of reproduction we can do anything. Now girls are told that performing stereotypes is what makes you a girl every sexist, outdated stereotype you can think of. And to add the final outrageous twist to the story, we know that among the children demanding gender change, those destined to be gay adults are hugely overrepresented. Instead of growing up healthy, happy, and same-sex oriented, they are being turned into permanent medical patients, sterile, anorgasmic facsimiles of the opposite sex and it does not escape my notice that this makes them straight. No homophobe in previous generations imagined that they could punish gay people by castrating them as children. And here we are. That is what is happening. We should be telling these precious children that they are beautiful just the way they are, that boys can wear skirts and makeup, they can grow their hair long, girls can climb trees and play in the mud and crop their hair. They can be lorry drivers, boys can be ballet dancers, that everyone can love who they want, so that it doesn't matter if a boy is effeminate or a girl is butch. The boy is still a boy and the girl is still a girl. Instead, we are saying to children, if they don't conform, there is something wrong with them. These children need time, space and understanding. They do not need their bodies fixed with drugs and surgeries. Of all the lies of gender identity, this is the most cruel. This is gay conversion therapy. When there is no stable meaning of sex, there can be no stable meaning of sexual orientation. A straight man who identifies as a woman becomes a lesbian. And too bad for the actual lesbians. Telling lesbians they should get over their aversion to male bodies, that is conversion ter therapy too. It is the postmodern version of what lesbians used to be told, that what they needed to be set straight is a good fuck. Rules and laws are written in words, and if words lose their meaning, so do the rules and laws. That is what the queer theorists want. They think that boundaries and categories are destructive, and abolishing them is liberating. Already scientific research is being corrupted by the destruction of sexed categories. I've read papers that say that women who are taking testosterone should keep taking the testosterone when they are pregnant because their validation as men is more important than their children's health and that it is cis-heteronormativity to care about the effect of the hormones on the children. The destruction of meaning will not stop at sex. 
It will extend to ideas of health and sickness and good and bad. We think now that everybody knows that everybody wants good health, but we used to think everybody knew that there were two sexes. Soon we are going to say, that it doesn't matter whether you're well or ill, it doesn't matter how your body functions, it doesn't matter if these drugs make you ill, because it's your choice. We have lost the idea that we are common humans, that we know what it is to be human, because part of what it is to be human is to be male or female. If you erase the difference between male and female, how long can you hold on to distinctions between health and sickness? How long can you hold on to the idea that some things are better than others? This has gone too far. We cannot and we must not allow ourselves to be co-opted into lies when those lies are about a fundamental part of the human condition. If we do not stand up now, where will this end? We all know the saying, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. Well, telling the truth in a time of deceit also has a price. We have not yet reached the point where the truth about the two sexes is impossible to state, but that is the direction of travel. I know there are penalties in this new law for so-called misgendering, but Germans and all other Europeans, we do still have human rights listed in the European Convention on Human Rights, and those include freedom of belief and expression. There's a lot of places yeah, yeah. that recognise that free speech is foundational among the human rights because without free speech, we cannot advocate for any other rights. The state may say that a man can be a woman, but we individuals who know this to be false, we need to refuse to say this lie yeah. and fight every step of the way if they try to make us. They will say we are prejudiced and unkind, but we are not. The true unkindness is pressing forward of the lie that causes so much harm. No matter what this law says, this is what I will continue to say. No man can be a woman, and no woman can be a man. No one is non-binary. And the reason we say these things is because they are true. The reason I don't believe the opposite is because it is false. Pieces of paper cannot change people's sex. Why do I have to say such stupid things? That's not in my speech. Every time I say this, I think, why has everyone gone mad? by writing it on a piece of paper. We can't make the earth flat by writing it on a piece of paper. If someone else wants to believe that a man can be a woman, or that a dead person is alive, or the earth is flat, they have freedom of belief and speech too. But these are not opposing positions of equal importance and sensibleness. One is right and one is wrong. And the reason it matters to say the right thing is because the truth matters. It matters for good health care, it matters for scientific research, for sound governance, for public policy making, for child safeguarding, for protecting everyone's human rights, but most especially the rights of women, children and gay people. I understand that for some people the cost of speaking the truth will be too high. Not everyone can be a revolutionary. But those of us who can speak up must, or else soon enough none of us will be able to. Thank you. Thank you so much, Helen. Thank you so much for traveling here. Thank you so much for doing everything you do for the purpose. And for the lesbians, might I say, Many, many, many uh, rat fans don't have us on the, in their, you know, they think we are women, which is right, but not just. Okay, also, ich habe mich noch bei ihr bedankt dafür, dass sie uns Lesben auch immer auf dem Schirm hat und uns nicht nur für Frauen hält, sondern auch versteht, dass es Lesben gibt und wir andere, äh, manchmal andere Bedürfnisse haben. Okay. <lacht>